James, I know you're the caravan. What do you get out of this experience, both in front of the fans and all the traveling you get to do? And how excited are you to be back on the road after you're off last year? You know, I think it's, it's uh, you know, for us, it's an opportunity to continue to build relationships uh, throughout the state, um, get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time with people, um, you know, not only with the fans, but also to see the other branch campuses, which I think is important. Um, I think we all know, you know, we've talked about this in the past, I think you know, one of the strengths at Penn State is that people come, they fall in love with it, and they never leave, and they build those relationships, and with us being somewhat of a new staff, you know, we still have work to do there. Um, you know, we've, you know, Wally's done a really good job of organizing Letterman aspects of these trips as well, so, um, you know, it's, it's about relationships, you know, so for us, the caravan allows us to continue to build, build those relationships that we're going to need to have moving forward. James, do you expect a little bit different atmosphere on the caravans this year, given what you guys were able to accomplish a year ago? Yeah, it'll, it'll probably obviously be a little bit different, obviously, um, you know, with some of the success that we had last year and things like that. Yeah, so it'll, I think it'll be a little bit different, but uh, the message from us will still be the same. Um, but I do think some of the things that went on this year, um, you know, probably, you know, got some people to maybe show up to these types of events. Uh, season ticket sales are way up right now, so that, that's a positive. So, yeah, I, I think... I think there's an excitement and there's an enthusiasm, and uh, all the sports play a big part in that. You know, I like to believe that football's a part of it as well. Um, but yeah, I think you know, it'll probably be a little bit different, maybe a little bit bigger crowds, uh, maybe maybe a little bit different questions to be answered. James, you advise some college grads to stay broke as long as possible. How long into your coaching career did you stay broke, and how tough is it to chase your dream when you're making four million bucks a year? Well, I, I think the thing that's interesting is, you know, to be honest with you, that was something that I didn't really kind of plan, but I did. Um, you know, I mean, you look at you look at kind of how my career got started. I, I didn't play major college football, so I didn't have the connect, connections in the network. Um, but that's kind of what I did. You know, I think my first job um, at Kutztown, I made fifteen hundred dollars for the year. I filled soda machines up on campus in the morning, um, and I bartended on Sunday nights in the off-season at some bar, I think it was called CJ's or something on the outskirts of town. Um, and I lived in Joe Ludwig's basement, which I think I talked about before, uh, or a spare room. Um, I think the next year I went to East Stroudsburg and made $5,000 for the year as a GA. And then I went and got my first big break and went to James Madison as a restricted earnings coach, which they had at the time, they don't have anymore. Made fifteen thousand dollars for that year. Then went went to Washington State and made five thousand dollars. So I've been out of school for four years, um, and and really just kind of kept taking opportunities as they came. And to be honest with you, I, I followed that model my whole career. Um, you know, I've never made decisions based on that. So it's something I've always given advice to young coaches and people coming up in the industry, as well as just uh, people in general that I come in contact with um, that I believe very very strongly in. You know, you, you chase the dream, the cha you chase the opportunity, you find something that you're really passionate about, and then the success and the opportunities will just come to you. Kind of going off of that, Nick Saban's getting $11 million this year, and not to put you up against him or anything like that, but do you think there's a cap at some point where you're, everyone's getting more money than maybe is good for the sport? I mean, is, can you be put in a situation where you, know, you see that kind of money getting that high and that's yeah you know I, I I probably don't really necessarily want to get into this whole discussion at this point but I but I do think um, it's crazy it's all crazy um, you know it really is um, you know you know for me you know I'm focused on doing my job and, and making sure I got our guys leave as educated men and prepared for life I, I'm a kind of an old school guy I believe in kind of the true student athlete and what this is all about um, you know, I've never made decisions off of that. Um, you know, but I guess it's it's no different than any any other industry or any other um, you know um, situation. Is is you know the market really demands that? That you know, I don't think any coach got into this for that. You know, but um, it is crazy. There, there's no doubt about it. James, uh, usually you know after the spring we might see one or two guys you know decide to you know head elsewhere for for different reasons. Has 
Has the roster stayed the same since the spring game? Has anyone decided to transfer, or you know, is that still an ongoing conversation? Yeah, I don't think there's there's anything new, um, you know, in terms of our roster uh, than from the last time we talked, from the time spring ended. I don't, I don't think so. Sometimes I say stuff and then I go off air and, and Chris will say, you remember this. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't think so. And, and Chris nods, nods no as well. James, you, you've talked in the past about when your players leave early uh, to try and go to the NFL and you shared your philosophy that if you're not sure you're going to be a first round pick, it's probably your best interest to stay. You talked about the programs you've put in place to educate the players and maybe kind of get an evaluation. I just wanted to ask you about Garrett Sickles. Uh, he didn't get drafted. He came out early. And for the stuff that you do for your players to kind of educate them, does that frustrate you when you see something like that happen? Do you have any opinion on you know, the decision maybe that he made? Or do you wish maybe he would have made a different decision? I know a lot goes into that, but I didn't know if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I love Garrett and, and his family. And, and he had a great career um, at Penn State. I think obviously after the fact, it's always easy to, to make comments. but. Uh, I'm very, very supportive of Garrett and his family. Um, you know, the, when I when I talk, I'm talking in generalities. You know, so I think I think in a perfect world, you know, from what all the data tells me, is you really shouldn't leave early unless you're going to be a first or second round draft choice. Um, but again, that that's when everything is is even and there's no other factors. But life is not like that. There's so many other variables that go into these things. Um, that, that people on the outside, a lot of people judge, and I'm not talking about Garrett, I'm talking in general, a lot of people judge and make statements, but uh, it's impossible to do that because you don't have all the information. You don't know what's going on personally, you don't know what's going on professionally in these people's lives, and these kids' lives, and their families' lives. Um, you know, for us, we're gonna, we're gonna educate them the best we possibly can, and then we're gonna support them through the entire process. For us, you know, the thing that I'm, I'm most, uh, that's most important to me is that they that they leave with degrees, um, you know, and if they are going to leave before that, that we have a really good plan of how they're going to get that degree um, at some point. The, the hard part is once real life starts, it's hard to go back, you know. So for us, you know, most of our guys graduate in about three and a half years. Uh, we want to we want to continue to do that, so then they kind of have some options at the end. We can kind of have some discussions. But it's just hard. Everybody says we'll go back, you know, and, and you know, d depending on how things go, you know, you have a house, you got a mortgage payment, you got a family, you got a wife, uh, you know, you got kids. Oh, uh, yeah, honey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gone for the next six months. I'm going back to state college. You know, I, I don't know if that necessarily works. So, um, you know, every situation is different, and I don't want to talk about specifics because um, I don't think that's my place. Coach, you mentioned the kids graduating. There's a lot of them doing graduate transfers. Uh, that whole process, that kind of whole trend with college football, how do you feel about that after the kids are getting their education, their bachelor's degree already, and then maybe people are choosing a different school to finish their career? Yeah, I, I think you can, you can make really good arguments both ways. I think the way it was set up, um, in theory, is I don't think necessarily what's happening. Um, I think the way it was set up initially was really good. The model was if a young man graduates and wanted to get his master's degree in something that wasn't offered at the school, he could have the ability to go anywhere that he wanted to get that degree. That's not really how it's playing out now. Um, um, so, you know, so it's, 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 uh, I think it's a challenge. I think the, the most, most important thing is you want to support the student athletes to be able to get the best experience they possibly can. I would hope an edu an education is a big part of that. Um, but, but, you know, again, these aren't simple, you know, scenarios. There's so many things that go into it, um, you know, that make it challenging and that make these discussions good. So I, I, I get it. I understand the importance of it. But um, a lot of times things don't necessarily play out the way they were initially intended. That's my concern with a lot of these rules that have changed um, is that in theory we think we understand, but there's so many unforeseen consequences that come, to the, come with the decisions that we make and the changes that we make, and we don't always necessarily know those until you know they're they're you know they're actually taking place. Two more. James, I know you do a, a great job of coaching your guys to make the right decisions on and off the field. This is a period where you don't have as much contact with them. Is it still an anxious time for a football coach going through these next couple of months? Yeah, we work really hard at it. You know, I think you guys have heard me say before, um, you know, 
we just obviously the tenth coach thing going through. I think that's a big part of the discussion because um, as the head football coach, I'm responsible for you know anywhere between 120 and 125 18 to 22 year old males, the most unpredictable group of people on the planet, and I'm responsible for them. I would I'd make the argument unfairly 24 hours a day. Um, so it, it's a challenge. Um, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking to our players and interacting with our players, not only from the head coach perspective, but also from the position coach and the strength coaches. Uh, you know, we'll use social media as well. So anytime we see, see something coming out, if, if we're having team meetings, we put it up in the PowerPoint. But if not, we'll try to direct message that or mass text that to the guys as well, just reminders. Every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, we send out a mass text around 10 o'clock at night reminding them to make great you know, choices and make great decisions. So um, at the end of the day, as coaches, we got to do everything we possibly can um, to, to continue to educate our players, to help them make great decisions. Um, because as we all know, there's college kids all over the country that are making mistakes. But when the athlete makes the mistake, it's, it's a much different situation. Now it's public embarrassment for them, public embarrassment for their family, public embarrassment for the university. So uh, we, just, we just try to do the best we possibly can to educate our guys, um, but also understand these are kids and, and they're going to make some mistakes and are, they are gonna make some poor choices. Um, the problem is, you know, just the way social media is, um, it, it, you know, I, they can't make mistakes like they used to and just getting them to understand that. I mean, you know, probably a lot of us growing up um, you know, on college campuses or in high schools, you know, we've all we've all made mistakes as well. But they're 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 living up in it. You know, they're growing up in a time that you not you, you don't necessarily are able to do that. Anymore. Hey, James, uh, Saquon and Trace, the success they had last year. How do you see them attacking the all season? The way they're handling it. How important is that for the rest of the team right now? Guys, it, it's really hard for me to kind of say those things. I can talk about those two guys as individuals and what I expect them to do. But really, to be honest with you, from the time the spring game ended, we give them off. Um, you know, that's right around exam time, so they're, they're focused on that, finishing school really strong. We have a certain amount of weeks a year where, where, where they, you know, they get off. They get nine weeks a year. Um, so we're getting ready for summer school to start, and that's really when all that will start. Um, you know, right now they're, they're just being normal college students and spending some time with their family and getting some really good downtime, probably the first downtime they've had in a while. Um, but that, that'll take place this summer. Um, you know, if I could imagine, you know, those guys have been awesome since the day they stepped on campus and I could name another 40 guys like them. Um, but they've been really good. You know, the thing I'm probably most excited about with those two guys is, you know, we're, we're finally at a point where I think our offensive line has a chance to be a strength for us and you have these two guys behind a line for the first time in their career that you know has a chance to be a real strength for us so so that's exciting um, but I can't imagine that their approach won't be any different than it's been since they arrived on campus and and with the experiences they have probably even better.